Katia V5 reverse engineering. So let's take a look. This will be the case study part. As we can see, this is a motorcycle crank case. And you can also download the model from the Artec 3D scan uh, database. I will select the STL file. Now let's jump within Katia and have that imported. So I will go to shape, digitize shape editor, since this will be a 3D scan in an STL file format. I will go for import and we're going to see that the model will already be added over here. I want this to be imported at the true scale, therefore I will leave the scale factor to one. If I will click apply, we're going to see how the crankcase will be loaded. To verify the dimensions of the 3D scan, you can always use the information. Afterwards, select the mesh and within the statistics, we're going to see those values. So we have the length, we have the width, and we also have the height, so 44 millimeters for the, for the height. Now, I want to create a planar section. Therefore, I will go from the X and Y plane. We see that the 3D scan part has been already al aligned by Artec. For example, if I will go to the front view, this will be the positioning. So this is quite well aligned. We see the top, we see also the bottom. If you want to, you can further adjust this using the compass. To do that, you can select the object, go over here on the compass, make it snap automatically to selected. And afterwards, if you're going to select the point cloud, you're going to have the compass with green. That means that you can start um, to rotate this. I highly recommend that you're going to use some uh, rotation increments over here which will be quite small. So for example, 0 0.5. And afterwards, you can just start clicking those and you're going to see how the mesh will update in real time. Now you will again verify how the mesh has been rotated. If, uh, if you want to further rotate this, you can go with various increments. So usually it is highly recommended to tinker uh, in order to align this. We see on this axis will not be fine for this case study part, so I will go on the other axis, on the U. If you want even more control, you can go with smaller increments. It is important that you will initially center the part before you're going to start uh, working on it. We can also go from the top view, and over here, if you want, you can further align it. Now, let's take a look at how we can extract various sketches from the mesh. Therefore, I will create a new plane from the X and Y. If you want the compass to no longer be active, you can disable it. Disable it. Afterwards, drop it on the background. And now, for example, if I would create a new plane starting from the X and Y, if you don't have the plane within Digital Shape Editor, you can move some of the features, but keep in mind that you can also type in at the bottom plane. I already have the C and um, those two points added, therefore I just need to type in plane, and this will give me the, the new plane definition. So in this case, I want a new plane at 20 millimeters from the origin. And over here, I will use the planar section in order to extract those curves. So I will go with planar section, the element will be the 3D scan. And afterwards, I will select the plane, the newly defined one. And we're going to see all those, all those curves. Now, we have the possibility to have them grouped. But in this case, if you want to further start and work with those, it is not recommended to have all those grouped. So. Over here, you have the check for grouped, have that unchecked. I will also expand the product tree over here. And now if I will click OK and apply, so initially apply and afterwards OK, we're going to see all those planar sections. Now, the main problem is that directly with a planar section, you cannot work 
So for example, let me just identify this one. If you want to identify a specific um, planar section, you can just select it and uh, that will be highlighted over here. Or you can right click on it and afterwards center graph and that will indicate within the product tree. So this will be planar section 10. If I would want to extrude this, for example, I will go to generative shape design. And over here we have the extrude um, option and we're going to see that the profile is not eligible for selection. So we see that the blue outlines, which are um, planar sections, cannot be directly used over here. Therefore, we need to convert those into 3D curves. So go to start, go back to this shape editor. And over here, we're going to have the following feature, which is curve from scan. You can also find that at the top, underneath curve creation, we're going to have curve from scan. And over here, we have to select the planner section. In this case, it will be 10. I can do that either directly within the product tree or within the viewport. And over here, we're going to have some, um, some parameters. So we can go with the creation mode with smoothening or with interpolation. Over here, we have the maximum amount of segments. If, for example, I will add a smaller value over here of 5, if I will click apply, now Katia will try to convert that mesh in only five curves, and that will be quite impossible. As we can see, the following spline will be um, heavily deviated from the original shape. If I will go with something like 20, I will hit apply. You're going to see that with 20, it is a little bit better, but still around the corners, it will, it will not be that well defined. So we have the initial sectioning with blue. And afterwards, we have the 3D curve over here. So I will add this to be 30. If I will click OK, again, we're going to see that in some areas, the newly defined curve will look like that. Therefore, I can go with a higher value, for example, 50. If I will click now apply, you're going to see that even though visually we don't see that, that uh, let's say, spline being smooth over here, if I will click OK, we're going to have that now converted into an accurate um, accurate spline. So keep that in mind that within the preview, you're just going to see the lines, so you don't have those smooth elements. So before you're going to go to the following step, I highly recommend that you're going to check the output of the curve, and we're going to see that in some areas we're going to have some slight uh, deviations. But afterwards, we can make use of this curve. So, for example, if I would jump back to generative shape design, since we have that section converted to a curve, I have the possibility to use the generative um, shape design workbench in order to create the surfaces. So, for example, if I would want to go to the um, let's say with reverse and for the top with a value of one millimeter we're going to be all the way over there so maybe 0 0.5 afterwards we're going to have a radius over here so within the following step we should define the top lane and afterwards using the trim tools the trim and split we can have those um, cut according to to the, uh, let's say, intended um, design. We see that in some areas, that top planner face will not be... So we still have the mode a little bit um, rotated. So it would be wise to better center this before we're going to start working on this. But for this case study, I will just go with two millimeters over there with 20 on the bottom, maybe 20 is not enough because we won't pass through that mesh so i will go with 26 for example and we're going to see that in some areas the surface with 26 will be outside but if i'm going to go with 30 we're going to have all those um 
overlapping the existing mesh. And afterwards, so we see that if a planar profile is extruder using the default normal as a direction, it may impact the stability of the extrude feature. But in this case, we can go for the extrude and we can add, so the default um, direction was over here. I can just override that. I can check the compass. If I will go with the Z axis. We're going to see that the direction will now be like this. And we're going to see that it will be properly aligned. So this was a video regarding how you can convert planar sections to curves that can be later used within generative shape design. So the workflow can be further applied on a case study parts like this in order to obtain the full model, but it will require quite a lot of computer-aided design, uh, specifically generative shape design applied in order to convert this into surfaces. And afterwards, we can have that converted to a closed surface. And afterwards, we can add material and we can uh, use this part for various um, simulations since we're going to have a full uh, solid body. Okay, so I hope that you find this video useful. I will position a similar video on the left side of the screen. I will add the Katia V5 tips and tricks to the top. And to the right, you're going to find the subscribe button. So that's it. Thanks for watching.